Hey folks, Joseph Sabori here, doing another movie review this week. This time is a totally unnecessary sequel to the surprisingly smash hit buddy cop comedy called Ride Along with Ice Cube and Kevin Hart. This time they team up together in Ride Along 2, which just came out um, a few weeks ago on January 15th of this year. It's actually um, making some money at the box office, which I'm surprised to, to see that it actually topped up Star Wars The Force Awakens, which, ironically enough, they actually made some jokes about Star Wars in the movie. I'm going to be honest with you. I didn't think that the original Ride Along film wasn't anything special. I mean, it was a decent flick. It had plenty of big laughs in it. You know, Ice Cube and Kevin Hart are very talented guys. I mean, they could definitely pull it off. But let's face it. There have been so many better buddy cop comedies out there. And I can name a couple. Yeah, like Rush Hour, 48 Hours, Stakeout, Running Scared, Lethal Weapon. I mean, you name it. There's like so many of them. This is just uh, another buddy cop film that's just I mean sure it will be remembered from time to time but it'll just become another forgotten movie in the franchise but but that's what you get when people wind up seeing this movie in theaters and they just can't stop laughing at it and yes I saw the movie last night yeah just to be curious enough for it I mean granted I do love the two guys and I was hoping maybe this one would be alright, but otherwise, it doesn't matter. <laughs> because it's already getting negative reviews as of today. I mean, it's already at 12% on Rotten Tomatoes. Yeah, a lot lower than the first movie, because the first movie was at 17%. I don't know, it could have been a lot worse. But this movie was worse. <laughs> because there are several funny moments in the movie that I can laugh at, but then there are other scenes that just seems to go out of nowhere, and they just seem to go on for so long out of its running time, and the jokes just seems to go flat within minutes. But let's get to the review. It stars Ice Cube, Kevin Hart, Ken John, Benjamin Bratt, who's been in several movies, including Demolition Man. So it was great to see him, at least. Olivia Munn, always been best known for that TV show, Attack of the Show, that aired on G4 a long time ago, and she went on to become a rising star with films like uh, Magic Mike. But then again, she went on to do some bad films like uh, Modi Kai, which came out last year, the one with Johnny Depp. And she was also in that awful film, The Baby Makers, Bruce McGill, Tika Sumter, Sherry Shepard, been on The View many times in several movies, Nadine Besquez, and Tyrese Gibson. It's written by Phil Hay and Matt Manfredi, yeah, the two writers of the original film, which is based on the characters by Greg Coolidge, and it's directed by Tim Story. The movie begins set in Miami, Florida. We meet a crime lord, Antonio Pope, who's played by Benjamin Bratt, who has a computer hacker, AJ, who's played by Ken John, who's going through the list of files on his laptop, even though he was watching an internet video of his girlfriend, Tasha. You know, dressed up as a rat, yeah, a rat suit, doing some sexy twerking moves. Yeah, I can't believe I saw that, but I did. Anyway, Pope had called Port Commissioner Griffin, who's played with James Martin Kelly, on the phone, accusing him of stealing all of his money, and hires one of his hitmen to shoot him inside his bedroom. So meanwhile, in Atlanta, James, who's played by Ice Cube, is working with his partner Mayfield, who's played by Tyrese Gibson in a small role, to go on a stakeout to find a drug dealer named Troy, who's played by Glenn Powell. Suddenly, Ben, who just got flesh out of the police academy, played by Kevin Hart, is eager to get on the action, just as he tried to contact James on the radio, getting already close enough to Troy. 
he pulls a gun on him. Ben sees this over on camera and decided to join in inside a 50 style car with hydraulics, drawing some attention to himself, but until he dropped his badge in front of the cook. Which leads to Troy making his escape by driving around on his car. Had a, a huge shootout. James and Ben decided to go after him yeah, as they chase him around into the parking garage. Yeah, and then until Troy had finally uh, ran into the ledge of the of the garage and and landed into another car, crashes and he's finally arrested. Well, but Mayfield, on the other hand, has been rushed into the hospital and was taking a leave of absence due to his injury. So Lieutenant Brooks, who's played by Bruce Miguel, had assigned James to go to Miami to see what Troy was working for. Ben wanted to go too, just to prove himself that he wanted to do some detective work. But unfortunately, with all the mess that he caused, you know, they couldn't hire him. So at home, Ben decided to plan on his wedding to Angela, you know, James' sister is played by Tika Sumter, but then he winds up clashing with the wedding planner, Corey, played by Sherry Shepard, on changing everything that he didn't want. But he thought that he can do it himself. You know, he tries to be man enough until he accidentally got knocked over a ceiling fan as he went on top of the table. So later that night, Angela was trying to seduce Ben by dressing up in a sexy police outfit. <laughs> but unfortunately, he wants to be in the bathroom just as soon as uh, James um, had made a call with Angela. Decided to change his mind to have him join in uh, by going all the way to Miami. So that way he can now do some detective work. So once they arrive, uh, they meet Captain Hernandez, who's played by Carlos Gomez, while Ben wants up meeting Detective Maya Cruz, who's played by Olivia Munn, as he was just trying to check out some information on the computer uh, on her desk. Of course, James uh, decided to uh, sort of fall in love with uh, Maya, just getting with Ben's uh, pressure points. So Ben decided to work on searching for the hacker AJ and once they found him they wound up chasing him all the way around the block. Yeah, fence after fence, you know, Ben started crashing into the fence and and he accidentally land inside uh, a box full of chickens. You know, all <laughs> and then he went inside the house and <laughs> got attacked by a little kid and then after that, James had ran over uh, AJ with his car, and they decided to take AJ on a ride along just to go straight into a local club where a safe has been hidden. So then AJ decided to plan Ben, since he's already getting married, decided to have a bachelor party, you know, filled with sexy girl dancers out there. Which then leads into a violent shootout between one of Pope's hitmen. And once they arrive at the scene, um, AJ escapes. And Maya had finally showed up, you know, wearing a sports brawl. So then, just when Ben was about to go back in the car, you know, trying to keep focus, you know, stay focused. Yeah, they always keep saying that in the movie. He found out that there was a bomb inside the car, and yep, it explodes. They borrow Maya's car, a blue car, and Ben just has uh, AJ's phone on him, trying to locate uh, his girlfriend Tasha to see where they at. But Ben decided to convince Tasha to spill the beans just by using all of his hookups with other women, using all these unique ringtones. Yeah, <laughs> coming from Apple. Yeah, and then I know they even left her with the that Apple ringtone as we know it. <laughs> but they didn't realize that the Pope is indeed the real crook, and the fact that uh, he had a public image as the interpreter, along with his new port commissioner, Nunes, played by Robert Prego. So they found AJ that's somewhere on the beach, 
and then once they uh, try to escape again yeah more bad guys uh, chasing him around yeah that's what leads to that scene which I'm going to talk about so after that the, James Ben and Maya decided to go to a party hosted by the Pope in his mansion Maya decided to distract Pope by dancing with him while James and Ben got her info you know just just as uh, Ben decided to go inside you know his mansion you know trying to uh, locate all the files and I know they got caught later and you know, Maya decided to find all the information that Pope has been hidden and they try to go all the way to the cargo site where yeah once again they're, they're just trying to go after Pope and his hitman by hitting all the, the drugs and all this other stuff inside so that's pretty much what the film is all about and oh boy I mean th this is one true lame sequel after another pretty much just recycling all the elements from the last movie and all these other uh, buddy cop cliches however I did laugh at some of the scenes but not all of them including that one scene where Ben was imagining himself uh, in a video game, you know, just when they were about to have a chase scene between them and the bad guys. You know, he was on the car, you know, driving around to escape from them, and <laughs> the whole image has changed into a video game. Yeah, he even got uh, James uh, as a, <laughs> a CGI uh, video game character, and, <laughs> and it was like, oh... He was like crashing into all these cars, you know, having all these shootouts and and shooting all the bad guys, and then uh, and at the end of that scene, it actually says, "Game over." <laughs> wow, I admit, I I actually laugh at that scene. It, it was hilarious, and there are some I can deal with, but the rest is just lame, stupid, and dumb, including the the scene where mostly involving Ben where he went inside the beach trying to find AJ and AJ actually told him to eat nachos that just came from a trash can yeah that's filled with hair on it and he just took a bite Ugh. and then by the time they went inside the mansion just as um, Ben was assigned to um, get out of the bathroom yeah, there was a Gucci bathroom. <laughs> he jumps out of the window and suddenly lands what seems to be a CGI alligator. Oi. And yes, the alligator attacked him. Of course, um, there's even one scene that pretty much plays out just like in the original movie. You know, remember that with that famous uh, pawn shop shootout? where uh, Ben actually started getting all crazy, you know, becoming a motor mouth and and accidentally shot the guy. Well, this time he shoots an Hispanic guy, but he wears a bulletproof vest. Because later on, uh, during the final shootout of the film, he does wear the bulletproof vest, just as they went to the cargo site. And he was driving a tractor uh, going after the Pope who just uh, kidnapped AJ inside the truck. And uh, <laughs> while James and Maya had, had went after him, you know, driving on the car. Yeah, Pope was about to uh, shoot uh, James and Maya. But then Ben had finally arrived at the scene and and he got shot, you know, wearing the best. And, and then... What happens next? James actually picked him up just as um, Pope was already been shot down. He got up, shoot him in the back. And then, <laughs> there you go. And then he finally got shot down. Yeah. And they keep telling Ben to stay focused, but he never cooperates. He just screws up every last chance they got. As for the cast, once again, Ice Cube and Kevin Hart reprise their roles as James and Ben. You know, one is tough as nails, and the other one is a motor mouth and very clumsy kind of guy. While Olivia Munn 
is so beautiful to look at, giving her a tough role. It's sad to say she was utterly wasted. Ken John is just pretty much playing the same character like he did in the movie The Hangover, but nevertheless, he's, he's always doing that same shit tick, considering the fact that he is indeed, you know, a real doctor. <laughs> yeah. A Benjamin Bratt, you know, he is pretty suave and very cool as uh, the villain. I mean, at least he's not weak like most villains would be. So I, I know nowadays, you know, they had to bring in another villain to join you know, for the latest mission. So he, he was good. But the film isn't. And I'm sorry to say it, but it's just a pretty lame forgettable sequel so anyway I give right along to one and a half star I'm Joseph A. Sabora and I'll see you later bye